Okay, let us get started again. Covariance. We talked about expectation, we talked about variance, right? Expectation of a random variable we talked about, variance of a random variable we talked about and that time we were all dealing with one random variable. But now we have expanded, uh, extended our scope, now we are talking about multiple random variables and then we talked about uh, joint CDF, we talked about joint PDF, right? When we are going to talk about multiple things, we said that they could be dependent. We, we talked about independent, if we are talking about independent, there has to be some dependency or notion of dependency also, right? Now, how to capture this notion of dependency? One notion to capture that to what extent some things are dependent. If something is not dependent, yes, there is a dependency. We need to now characterize how much they are dependent. For that we use the notion of covariance and covariance for simplicity we will define it between two random variables and it is defined like this by definition covariance between two random variables is notice that two things here. I am defining basically a new random variable which is product of two random variables. This is one random variable and this is another random variable. This random variable I obtained by subtracting mean from the x1 and the second one I obtained from x2 after subtract, subtracting its mean value. And then I am taking the product and this is I am calling a random variable y and now the covariance is between x and y is actually the expectation of this which is expectation of this quantity which I have written here. So, what it is basically doing is it is taking the product of these two random variable after centralizing them. What I mean by centralizing is that I am subtracting the mean from that random variables right. Whenever, whenever we subtract the mean from a random variable we call it centralizing them. So, this is basically we have centralized the random variables taken their product and looking at their expectation and we will argue now that this in a way captures how much they are dependent with each other if at all they are dependent. Okay, one obvious thing that will come simple man algebraic manipulation is if you just expand this product and apply a uh, definition of expectation, you will get this. So, how, by the way, how many of you know that uh, expectation operator is linear operator? In IE 621 was this discussed? Right? So, what do you mean by, let us say I have two random variables and I am taking their product x1 plus x2 and if I take expectation of z, what is this value is? When I explain, does this require x1 and x2 be to be independent? No, it does not matter what the distribution is. Okay, that is why this, this is called expectation is a linear operator. So, you need to use that linearity property of expectation and you take their uh, product here inside, multiply x1 with x2, x1 with this, like that you get 4 terms and after you simplify you will get this term. Now, one immediate observation is, suppose if x1 and x2 are independent, what is going to happen to this term? This term is nothing but expectation of x1 into expectation of x2, right? So, if x1 and x2 are independent, right? Then you see that right away covariance of x1 and x2 is going to be 0. So, if two random variables are independent, we are saying that their value covariance is going to be 0. Then what does 
what is the meaning that if their value is not zero then it, they are not depend independent right there is some relation between them so let's try to understand this what does this mean okay let's take two events a and b on some sample space now i'm going to define two random variables random variable 1 i'm going to say assign to value 1 if that event A occurs, otherwise I will take value, its value as 0. Whenever event A occurs, I will take random variable x1 to be 1, otherwise I will take 0. Similarly for x2. x2 is based on event B. If B2 occurs, I will take x1, x2 to be 1, otherwise I will take it to be 0. Now let us try to understand what does covariance of this means. Okay, now you can quick calculations if you apply this definition of expectations, right? The covariance between x1 and x2, you can verify that this will simplify to probability that x1 is 1, x2 is 1 minus probability that x1 equals to 1 times probability that x2 equals to 1. This will, it will work out like this. Now, suppose, assume that x1 and x2 the covariance is positive you assume this what does this indicate let's see what does this indicate if this has to be positive then the right side has to also be positive this is going to imply that this term has to be larger than this term everybody agree now i will do further simplification this x2 equals to 1 i will bring in the denominator then this ratio has to be larger than this quantity now the by the definition of our conditional probability what it is saying is this is probability that x1 equals to 1 given that x2 equals to 1 right everybody agree with this definition of conditional probability now this conditional probability is greater than probability that x1 equals to 1 what it is saying is this is a if and only if conditions all of them if the covariance between x1 and x2 is positive that means that if x2 equals to 1 has happened then the conditional probability that x1 equals to 1 is higher than the unconditional probability of x1 taking value 1 that means if x2 is going to has happened 1 then x1 is also more likely to take the value of 1 right that is what this is saying that means it is kind of already telling that somehow if I know something about x2 I am able to infer something about x1 not only that but in what directions they are moving in a way that if x2 is 1 it is likely that x1 is also going to be the same there are only two values right 0 1 it is saying that if x1 is 1, x1 is also is going to 1. It is not going towards 0, it is going towards 1. Okay, so, what it is going to indicate is, if this absolute value of the covariance, if it is positive, it indicates that, positive means strictly positive, it indicates that occurrence or non-occurrence of one random variable provides some knowledge of about the other so there is some dependency if this value has been 0 then we know that by definition this unconditional probability is equal to conditional probability if they are independent that is when this is equals to 0 but now that we are assuming this is greater than 0 that means x2 equals to 1 implying that x1 equals to 1 has a higher probability now Now, in general, the covariance can take positive or negative value, okay, positive negative value and whenever it is a positive value, it is an indication that when one random variable is increasing, other is also increasing in an average sense, okay, all we are talking in average sense, nothing is in terms of one realization, it is average across all realization. Okay, 
And similarly, whenever this covariance is going to be less than 0, this is an indication that when x1 increases, x2 is decreasing, like they are not in the same direction. And again, this is an average sense, average sense, nothing like absolute realization sense. Now, this definition of the covariance has a straightforward properties. Now, you can always ask for a covariance of a random variable with itself. Like covariance of a random variable x1 with itself. And by definition, this is exactly variance of x1, right? So, here if you make it uh, x2 is also x1, this is going to be expectation of x1 minus expectation of x1 whole square and uh, this is exactly the definition of variance of x1. The second one, covariance is, is not dependent on the ordering of these random variables. Whenever you are talking about two random variables, either you take covariance of x1 and x2 or covariance of x2 and x1, they are the same, right? Because uh, you multiply uh, whatever like uh, you multiply this term first, this term first and then this or this one first and that one that does not matter. And now if you scale one of the random variables, let us say x1 by factor a, then whole of this covariance gets scaled by a factor of a. Again this I would like you to verify this last two properties. And if I have one random variable, let us say I have now three random variable and one random variable y which is nothing but the sum of two random variable x1 and x2 and now I want to look into the covariance between y and x3, this can be written as covariance of x1 and x3 and covariance of x2 and x3. Again this follows from properties of your covariance basically by the definition of covariance. Please check all these things. Okay. Now I am going to switch to next slides. So meanwhile, if you have any questions about this covariance, independence of the random variable, you should ask now. Okay, let us continue. So is that uh, moment generating functions are covered in IE 6 to 1? Okay. Okay, let us go through it. Yeah, uh, so far we covered all these stuffs, right? Mm, independence of random variable and correlation of random variable. So what we'll do is now we'll quickly start migrating to the statistics, and uh, these two theorems, the limit theorems, law of large numbers and central theorem limits, these are our bridging bridges between probability and statistics. Okay. So, once we conclude these two theorems, we are ready to get into statistics. But uh, before that, let us uh, understand uh, some more concepts of probability. Let us say you have two random variables and now you are trying to get new random variables out of this and you may have multiple of them. So, one of them I get is by applying some function g. one and I got a new random variable y1 which depends on both x1 and x2 and I have another random variable y2 which is again applied on obtained by x1 and x2 after applying this function g2. So now we are expanding right earlier I had just one random variable and I did this like one function of one random variable. Now I have multiple random variables and uh, I get I am applying function which is applied on both these random variables. Now the question is how to derive joint distributions of these two random variables y1 and i2. Where's, where's, where you may end up with such situation? Let us say I have two random variable x1 and x2. You are interested in their sum and their difference. Now y1 is the sum and y2 is the difference. right? And now you want to understand what is the joint distribution of y1 and y2. So, 
and another thing you have let us say Cartesian to polar coordinates let us say you have this x1 and another is x2 you may be take some point here x1 and x2 one thing is you will be interested in one is your magnitude and so you have this Cartesian form r and theta. So your r the radius or the distance is given based on x1 and x2 and your angle is also depends on x1 and x2 right. Now you have these two random variables you have based on that you have new random variables. Now you may want to know how this radius and angles jointly behave. So that is you are interested in finding the joint distribution of y1 and y2. How to do this? And what is you are given? You know well x1 and x2 and you know their joint distribution. Let us say their joint distribution x1 and x1 is available to you. But you from that you need to find out the joint distribution of y1 and y2 how to do this. One obvious way is if I want to find out CDF of my random variable let us call this y at point y1 and y2 is simply integrate it over all x1 and x2 such that g1 of x1 and x2 is less than or equals to y1 and g2 of x1 and x2 equals to y2. You are basically interested in that region right and then anyway this is given to you the joint CDF sorry the joint PDF of x1 and x2 is given to you. So I integrate it over the your region of interest but this is often tedious. So what I will look into is some simple methods to compute this ok. So for that we will assume that this we have two equations right this is one equation this is another equation for given uh, I mean x1 and x2 value you get y1 and uh, for the same x1 and x2 depending on your function g2 you will get y2. And let us say that these are such that you are going to get uniquely for a given value of y1 and y2 you can get what is the corresponding x1 and x2 that results in this value uniquely. Now also assume that your functions g1 and g2 have continuous partial derivatives. I am talking partial derivatives here because g function is functions of multiple variables here. Okay. Now we are going to define something called a Jacobian matrix at the point x1 and x2 which is defined like this. Actually I am taking the determinant of this Jacobian matrix here and uh, which is computed like this ok. So first row corresponding to the function g1 and the second row corresponding to the function g2. Assume that this Jacobian function is not 0 at any point x1 and x2. Now it so happens that the joint PDF of your new random variable at point y1 and y2 you can obtain simply by dividing joint PDF of x1 and x2 by this determinant of your Jacobian matrix right. You do not need to go and do complex uh, math here like uh, this complex uh, integration here to get this all you need to do is like first of all this is this was only giving you the CDF if you need to get a PDF you need to di differentiate it right before you get a CDF sorry PDF but here we are expressing these things directly in terms of the PDF ok. How it comes we will not get into the proof this is just for our use ok and we are going to use it later actually. I want you to be aware of this, this relation. We are simply saying that the method is if I have given two random variable and two functions and I have y1 and y2 as new random variable 
to compute the joint distribution on y1 y2 i need to first find out the jacobian matrix and find out that x1 and x2 which uniquely solve for that given y1 and y2 and uh, for a given f function i use this relation okay okay an example is here like uh, the example i said let's take g1 function to be a sum of random variables and g to be difference of these two random variables and assume that x1 here is exponential with parameter lambda 1 and x2 is exponential with parameter lambda 2 and also assume that they are independent. So, then what is the value of this the joint distribution of x1 and x2? it is going to be product of two exponential one is lambda 1 lambda 1 x and other is into lambda 2 x ok now another thing we said our method applies if you are going to for a given x 1 and x 2 I will uniquely obtain x1 and x2 which solves that equations right. So, in this case if I are given x1 and x y1 and y2 you will see that x1 corresponds to y1 plus y2 by 2 and x2 is y1 minus y2 by 2 all you need to do is uh, solve these equations. So, what I have is y1 equals to x1 plus x2 and y2 is x1 minus x2 for a given y1 and y2. I compute and find out what is x1 and x2 and x1 happens to be this and x2 happens to be this. Now, if you go and compute the determinants of the Jacobian matrix, this is exactly this value. Okay. And now, I am going to simply apply the formula we discussed, the denominator is minus 2, but why did I take 2 here and notice that this is absolute value of the determinant value in the denominator. So, the, even though I got the determinant as minus 2 here, I have taken its absolute value that is why it is 2 here and the numerator the joint PDF it has split into the marginal because they are independent and now All I have done is use this formula here and replaced x1 by y1 plus y2 by 2 and x2 by y1 minus y2 by 2. Now, this is entirely in terms of my y. Okay. Okay. So, there is another example here. This is based on the Cartesian things and uh, one more thing for tomorrow's quiz is this question may or may not come tomorrow's quiz you better work out it may or may not come if it comes you have worked out you already have the solution ok. So, this uh, moment generating function maybe we will take it up in the next class this is a new topic and uh, we will stop here.